For years I've travelled the world with my children and lived and worked in many different countries. Now that my children are independent adults, it's time for me to realise my childhood dream and own a farm. In June 2020, I bought an old farm in central Portugal that hadn't been worked on for 50 years. My name is Cindy. Join me and follow my journey as I try and restore the stone cottage and turn the land into a working farm again. Welcome to Quinta da Bela Pedra, my Portuguese farm. So this is the left over of that roll of when I thought I bought chicken wire to make those chicken wire um, raised garden beds and it turned out to actually be plastic. I'm actually thinking there's 36 blocks here. So if I cut them into blocks of 12, I can actually put this at the bottom of um, of the other pig pen. So this is just just to keep, I'm just thinking aloud, so excuse me. And Cindy's bored with my thinking aloud, she's gone to sleep. But um, I'm just thinking, because I just need to stop the little piglets when they come again from being able to get through the bottom squares of the um, the sheep fencing that I've got. So, I mean, I don't know, this might not last very long, but it'll definitely last the eight weeks that the piglets will be there, I reckon. And it might be easier for me to work with than... Um, the other wire so I'm gonna cut this yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm thinking out loud have a little bit of reading to do So when you have so much to do that it's overwhelming, I always find it's easy to start off with easy bits that you can manage. <laughs> like cutting pieces of plastic. I can do that. So if you start off with that, then then eventually you can sort of build up to tackle the more difficult things. So fiddly to work with.
time to rack up some poop, so I need the rake back. So my duct tape is coming off. Some of these cabbages are looking sad, aren't making too much more progress. So I'm actually going to just um, cut them with this craft knife and feed them to the pigs before they dry out and then you can't use them at all. At least now they can still be used for the pigs. Right, have a bucket ready for the pigs. Are we ready to go and feed the pigs? Hey, eh? we ready to go and feed the pigs? You gonna come, Juno? Candy's ready to go and feed the pigs. So, Cocoa Pops' teats are more or less dried up. So, this is after almost a week now of the weaning. What are we doing, all my girls? You're all smiling, ready for breakfast this morning. Got lots of good treats. Yes, oh, even apple pie is smiling. Yes, I last pumped on Saturday, so um, it has got a little bit more water in, but it does fill again, but so slowly. And I mean, I'm thinking this time last year, it was up to this thing that I call the roast chicken. There, yeah, looks like the chicken drumstick over there. There's the wing. That's where the head has been chopped off. So last year it was right up to the roast chicken, this time of the year. And this willow tree is the best growing thing on the farm. As I've said before in previous videos, we have dug out the roots. We've taken this out so many times and it just keeps coming back. So I've decided to just leave it this time. It, there's a wallow that pulls up under the shade of this rock and over there you can see there's another area that becomes a wallow. So I'm just filling up the wallows today. I think what I need to do is um, dig out some furrows for the water to run down in. So it's um, intentional and not accidental if that makes any sense but this they like coming into this area yeah. don't you maggie maggie's very heavily pregnant what's this Matt? Hmm? So this is what's left after filling their wallows and the blue water tank. So um, I'll leave this three days and in between those days in between I will um, use the water bottles again. And then that gives us a chance to fill up again the next time I can do wallows and the blue tank. Uh, this morning, George is trying to escape from Oreo. Oreo is, what would you say? Filled with oats. Oreo. Yes, George. George Cooney. 
is Oreo trying to do his thing. You see, that's why I say Oreo just flaunts it, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you want a bit of a scratch. Yes. No, Oreo. He's a boy. Overcast today, not as hot. But uh, yeah, the wallows have been filled up. I'm actually thinking of um, the end of the month when I get some money, I'm going to buy and uh, I think I'll buy an umbrella for this one. What do you say, Chris? You're going to be moved from here within a week anyway. I've got to um, get that fence in the big pen strengthened. There's so much shade over there, so that's not a concern at all. This one has got a tree, a nice shady area they like to go under. This one just gets shade in the afternoon. So I'm going to put, I think, an umbrella with an umbrella stand um, around that wallow. Of course, when it's windy, I'll have to take the umbrella down. Morning chores done. Pigs fed and watered. I can finally have first cup of coffee of the day. And then I need to get to work on the fencing and the pig housing. Okay, so this pen is clean. The pig poop has been um, raked up into piles. And I've just got to bring in the wheelbarrow now and pick that up. So that part is done. So time for another cup of coffee, my second cup of coffee and some breakfast, I think. I'm standing here wondering if it might be easier to use some of these bigger pieces to put on the bottom like skirtings, um, like we've done in the other pens. This is like, yeah. Well, it's been put in the, the other pens, uh, the piglets can still go underneath them, so I would think about this very carefully. Too many decisions to make this morning. It's almost raining. It's like a part. Every five minutes is another drip. But time I've emptied out um, all the kindling from here. I've put it over there. And time to load up um, the wood that Louise cut. And... Um, take it down to get ready to build a pig house so I reckon I'll need the tape measure probably the saw and yeah start loading up the wood this morning I came very close to shedding a few tears I can tell you but I just, I mean, there's no, there's no point in, in losing tears. It's, it's just like, there's a hell of a lot of work that's got to be done in the next week. I've got to, I've got six sows that are going to be farrowing soon. And I have to get the fences strengthened. I have to get the extra maternity houses built. I've got to get paddocks um, piglet proofed. And at the moment, I have no help. <laughs> so I have to try and do this all my, by myself. And I don't really have um, building skills with woodwork and stuff like that. I can, I can do things with plasterboard, but, uh, and I can paint, and that's about it it but I'm just gonna have to learn on the job and um, this morning I was thinking oh my goodness how on earth am I gonna be able to do this and then I just started I, I um I've raked up the pig poop um, I've taken the wood that Louise has cut I'm now going to um, sort through um, this other wood so I'm going to sort through this wood now and um, 
look for bigger pieces that I can use because I'm going to need some to put at the bottom for skirting and others for when I close in the pig house. So I may as well stop procrastinating, get onto that. So I've just carried this piece here and it is the right length. So some of them I'm going to put on the inside, others on the outside. Where the fence has been bent a little bit, I'll put them on the outside. And yes, I am a little bit out of breath from walking up the hill in the heat, carrying a big piece of wood. So for those people that think I'm ill, I'm not ill. It's just it's really hot and when you walk up a hill carrying stuff, you get out of breath. First load. Um, and then what I plan to do is just sort of cut the thicker bits, try and measure up the, put the thicker bits between posts for around the fence. Checking to see the teeth lines, and you also look at um, yeah the back ends over here. You can see how it's starting to swell there, um, and the teeth lines are coming. So we got babies coming pretty soon. Um, just Mellow Puff is not pregnant. And Maggie, she's quite heavy. Cheesecake I wasn't sure about, but she's starting to get the teeth lines as well now. I'm very happy that those miserable poles actually made it. And they have some shade. Last year it was uh, it was melting here. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to mess with them too much. Right? Yeah, I think yeah. There is no reason even. And they, you can see, so they're not really making honey in the top yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Well, they are there. The presence yeah. over there. It means that they are working. They need to mm. build the wax mm. uh, and they store, but also they can take, they can store. But then if you have those days that are, there isn't a lot of forage, mm. they can take honey from top and take it down for them. Yeah. So they're playing with it. But okay. if you're going to check But they it, got space to move. Full. So yeah, that's the good thing. Full. I think this is full of honey. Mm. Not like 100%, but mm. I, I think that there will be maybe two or three. Or so. Ooh, listen to the thunder. Yeah. And then the rest would be probably honey. So that's good. So when will we take harvest the honey so then? So that's the question. Um, actually, remember I said they're already on two boxes. It's too mm -hmm. late to treat them for varroa because we, mm -hmm. we were late. So that's the good thing. We can actually use that honey here. So we can probably harvest honey now already. Um, actually, I think we can. Okay. 
if it's a good idea in the winter to take their honey. Mm. It's just, you know, mess with the bull, you know, so mm. we might get the horns. Um, <laughs> okay. But we can. But anyway, they are, they are keeping the honey. Yeah. They are, it's safe here. Mm. So, even in the next time, in here we can actually do it. Or if you want to harvest and spin it, so we can do it properly, you know. Yeah, the I can think, I can maybe, I think Nick has got a spinner. So if I take the honey there, I can probably spin it over there at yeah, his house. Sounds good. Listen, they are very, very gentle now. Yeah. Um, they don't feel like uh, protecting because I'm not hustling there. But let's just leave them this way. Especially this, this wrong one. Mm. Because they proved us that if we do nothing with them, they're doing the best. Yeah. Okay. And this one will add the super on. Yeah. Oh, so listen to the thunder. The uh, question is if it's going to be a honey super or just a super. You know what I mean? Like a deep box or a shallow box? I don't know. What, whatever you think. You're the expert. Yeah, it's not about... Uh, I don't think there is one um, right answer for that. Um, okay, let me check them from the inside. Uh, the, the nice thing... Okay, so I will share with you and you decide because mm -hmm. this, is, this is how you learn. This is your hives. If we give them a shallow super, they might fill it with the honey, mm. which is good. If we give them, so you're going to have some honey. Mm. If you're going to give them a deep box, they might not fill it with honey. But even if they do just build the, the frames, mm. it's also precious and very important. Because next year, when you give them that super or like those mm. frames, already drawn wax, they're going to right away start okay, to so, utilize it. So if this was your beehive, what would you do? I'm gonna check inside. Okay. See how the population is, and uh, maybe maybe the queen wants to come up and lay more eggs and stuff like that. Okay. But cool. if they're not too crowded, I would give them a shallow super. Okay. Right. Right. So we're going to try and move the third beehive now into a new box. Well, has the smoker ready? We're going to calm them down because these bees are attached. They're attached onto the lid, eh? So they'll go back to the exactly the same spot there. Yeah. Good opportunity to clean it a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. What's there? This is a hive beetle. I think it's dead. Okay. But this is how they look. My hives were infested by them. With these hive beetles. It's a large hive beetle. Worse than the less worse than the um, small um, hive beetles. I think few we don't have it, but um, still unpleasant because stress to the bees and they deform the yeah deform the wax the combs and stuff. Look at that. This is foragers already coming back. They will be confused because. They will go in and they will And there's going to be nothing this there. No, yeah. This is no way I left it. So we're taking out these ones and we're going to put in some ones where we've removed the wire. Because Moore has a cunning plan.
amazing, the forage is already starting to go towards the new box. Even though we haven't put anything in there yet. They've made their own on the lid. Wow. It's like almost, I feel like. So there was one frame in there. Yeah. And they've started on there. Because if mm -hmm. the queen is going to move around, hopefully she will go down to the box, huh? Yeah. So Moore has this cunning plan. He's removed the wires and he's putting elastic bands there instead to try and hold those new, well, those combs that the bees made. And work on that. Now, some smoke would be nice. It looks like they're capping it and everything. Yeah, yeah, this is capped brood, huh? Yeah. They've been doing it for a while, so this is like at least... It's, it was complete build at least 21 days ago. Yeah. So, they've been here for a couple of months. Yeah, and we just... I mean, because we never came to look under the tree until we came to see if that box was usable, Everything, and he's going to carefully put it inside a frame where he's removed the wires and keep it in place with the elastic bands. So somewhere here the queen will be. Sorry? The queen will be somewhere in one yeah. of these. Yeah. So, pretty successful. I think we didn't see the queen in that third hive, but um, there were like several sort of like bee clusters so we think that she might have been with um within one of those clusters of bees and there's a lot of uh, fresh capped brood over there so there's definitely a queen that's busy 
Okay, so cleaned out these old um, supers. Um, those are a couple of new frames from the new hive um, that we've put that swarm in that had gone into the wax moth hive. Yeah, you can see that's all the honey comb that I threw out. Murphy's Law, as I was going to get started off the pins, it's raining! Yay! I'm hiding in the shed. Woohoo! A serious downfall! Yay! Because it lasts. So I am making a little progress this morning. Um, this is more of a deterrent for piglets rather than something to look beautiful because I don't have the skills for beautiful. Um, so what I'm doing that I'm finding it easiest to do is one on the outside, one on the inside. So um, there's been one on the inside here, that one's going to be on the outside and there's going to be one on the inside over here. What are you doing, Juno? Oh, having a stretch. What are you doing over there, Tandy? Hey, what are you doing? Are you smelling tracks of animals? Tandy's sort of in the bush the other side. Juno is right here, but Tandy, she likes to go exploring. She's obviously finding something. What are you finding over here? Hey, are you picking up the scent of something interesting? Are you picking up the scent of something interesting? Okay, I've put one up so far. Let me keep going little bit hot and sweaty I'm not wearing a hat because this is all in the shade so yeah I've done about half actually more 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 like three quarters of this pen putting skirtings on the bottom and I'm now going to use cable ties to attach the wire onto it to make sure there's no gaps and I'm going to try and see if I can use this. I bought this when I first moved here. I was going to make an enclosure and put a shower around. Um, that was on the job list of the boys at that time in June. And they never did it. And this has just been lying, rotting in the grass. So I'm going to see if I can attach that to this part of the fence over here. Bit of a cheek. Um, a state agent is parked at the top of my property. I don't know what he's showing them. Maybe the property past mine. But he's not asking my permission. <laughs> oh, look what's popped up already on this fence. So 
So the farm behind mine um, is still up for sale. And I think the reason why it hasn't been sold yet is, number one, the price. But also that it actually has no access. <laughs> it's a farm surrounded by other farmers. There's no access. And um, the estate agent just stopped at the top of the hill. I was busy um, working on the pig pen, so they didn't see me. And uh, I heard the estate agent tell the people, oh, the, uh, uh, the people said, oh, I recognize that farm. That's Cindy Vine's farm. Oh, my goodness, this is Cindy Vine's farm. And, and then he says, oh, but that farm, this is the one without any access, that farm is more modern than Cindy Vine's farm. <laughs> Oh my God, what nonsense these agents tell people. It might be time to put up a new one. This one's full already, oh my goodness. That's all flies, all that black you see. Midday, officially hat time. I'm actually pleased with how this part has turned out. What one can you reuse? So now I'm going to use this plastic bit to put against the bottom over here. See if that will work. Let sleeping pigs lie. Oh, you think it's food time? <laughs> yes. Okay, these zip ties are too short. I need to get much longer ones. So I can't do anything more until I get more long zip ties. So because I have quite a few of these shorter zip ties, if I join them together like this, I can actually create a long zip tie. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to join the shorter ones together to make long ones that I need. Slightly cooler this morning. Just listen, I don't know if you can hear the bees. Oak trees are alive with bees at the moment. Which is a good thing because they're pollinating the oak tree's flowers, which means there's going to be lots of acorns for the pigs. So I've done my thing with the cable ties. Um, I've only got this section here left to do and I do have some chicken wire. I'll see how far that goes. Um, and then I've got to just add on to that house to build another house. The wood is ready there. So, two mornings ago I was feeling overwhelmed and anxious thinking I'm never going to get all of this done. Um, yesterday morning I took an anti-anxiety pill that the doctor gave me when I was having panic attacks when I couldn't get back to Portugal. And man, it just cleared the mind and I could see what needed to be done and then just started doing it. Busy um, zip tying or cable tying this um, 
chicken wire. This is just a low one. This is normal wire. Um, I don't need it higher. So I can just get the shorter roll. I don't know how long it's going to be. I can't remember. But we'll see. We'll go as far as we can with this. And then we'll change to using those um, other slat thingies again. But uh, for now, it's cable time. Right. Seems to be working. I think I have fallen in love with this low chicken wire fencing because it's something that I feel I can do and um, all I've got to do is attach it onto the existing fence with zip ties easy as and I think this will even keep big pigs in as well so I'm in love with my new system yeah just walked into my kitchen and there's a child's shoe you can see I put my foot next to it it's a child's shoe how on earth did a child's shoe arrive in my kitchen so this has arrived the draw knife which people advise me to get for debarking so hopefully that's going to work well the other thing to arrive is this uh, Kawuthi trickle charger which yeah I'm going to have to read the instructions try and figure out how that works that will be for the big pen so that hopefully it will work when I put Cocoa Pop and Oreo in there so just inside having a short break and um I have to go and fill up water. I just went to go and pump water for the pigs, for the wallows. They've all been wallowing. But um, the girls have pulled one of the nipples out of the blue barrel. So I can't fill the blue barrel with water at the moment. I've got to figure out how to fix that because if they've pulled it out, then they've probably made that hole too big for me to be able to use so i might need to get another blue barrel but i need to have a, a look at it um they were all there wallowing around where the water came out from the hole so um i wasn't going to go and step in pig amongst pigs wallowing to go and check that out so that's on the list of things to do so i've basically piggy proofed or piglet proofed um, the pen across the road I've just got to build the extra house there and um, and then I've got to build the extra house in Cocoa Pops pen and then just check the fencing around the main big pen that the girls are in now so that when I put Oreo and Cocoa Pop and uh, George Cooney will Mallowpuff will stay there. George Cooney and Chris. It's uh, Coco Pop is the big one for finding weaknesses in fences. So that's to do. But I think I need to get those two houses built. Um, and then I'm going to... Oh, I've got to do all of this before um, Friday. Because I think that's when cinnamon bun is due so um i'm under the pump here really under the pump but anyway um if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe follow my journey on uh, creating an off-grid homestead in central portugal um the working on the cottage and the kitchen has um had to just take a little breather while I get the pig area sorted out because I have six girls pregnant 
and I have to get that done ASAP. Um, once that's done, then I get I will continue with um, uh, completing my kitchen and doing that cordwood wall. All of that is planned for, but I've got to get the pig story sorted first. Um, great news is that um, I have managed to work a deal with the owners of that um, land, those two fields with that extra big well on it. Um, I've managed to get them to bring the price down quite a lot and also um, an agreement that I can pay them off in six months because obviously with all my expenses in South Africa I don't that I was trying to get back I don't have that kind of cash lying around at the moment but at least I'll have those uh, two fields and so my farm will now be a three hectare farm rather than um, just over two and a half hectares and I'll have the third well which is very very important in this dry summer after a dry winter so in the meantime subscribe like hit that notification bell and keep safe keep sane and I'll see you on the next video